So the other day we were doing the whole Sarah Boone hearing that she had. Um, long story short, she won her motion to have her physical documents in her cell, which is something that I believe that she should have had the entire time. I don't care what jail you're really in. I don't care what conditions there are. We're in the United States of America. And I think if you're going to defend yourself, if you're that stupid, if you're that slow in the head, you should at least have the best chance possible. You know what I'm saying? So I really like that the judge granted that for her. And it's not because it's, I'm not saying that because I want her to win or anything. I just think it it streamlines the process and it gets rid of the possibility of, you know, obviously I almost said a recall. It eliminates the possibility of an appeal. But we got some other situations that we found out in this trial as well. In this hearing, sorry. We found out that Sarah Boone is going to be using shock shackles and she's going to have to sign a little waiver every single day so that she has some sort of freedom of movement in the courtroom or else she wouldn't be able to have that freedom. So who knows, folks? We might see a, a spicy Sarah Boone get shocked one of these days. Insanity, bro. And I always find it odd that they use shack shackles. Shack shackles? Whoa. Shock shackles, mind blown. I find it weird that they use shock shackles for Sarah Boone and not Daryl Brooks. But anyways, people, let's get up into this thing. You guys comment and let me know what you guys think about this whole situation. All right, the next matter of this morning is the defendant's motion for defendant's reasonable freedom and movement by allowing her to be unshackled, unhandcuffed, to function equally and comfortably while utilizing the courtroom that was hand filed with the court on August 5, 2024. Courts have the opportunity to review that motion um, and the law regarding restraints. Um, State, do you have any positions at this time with regard to the defense's motion? I guess here we go. Your Honor, uh, in speaking with uh, courtroom security, we would oppose the motion. And we have uh, Corporal uh, Gavin Lowton available to uh, supplement uh, this court's uh, knowledge on the issue. Okay. So, ma'am, we're going to have a hearing on your motion. The state will call the corporal. He will uh, be inquired by the state as to some concerns that they may have and you'll be given the opportunity to ask him questions or cross-examine him after the state's concluded asking any questions do you have any questions about that process is that today that will be happening right now yes ma'am okay do you have any questions about that process i don't okay all right let's go ahead and call your witness state. i'm surprised state there's no call questions. Gavin So instead of having freedom of movement, they give her shock shackles? That's crazy. How did shit, how did shit escalate? Sir, good morning. Can you state and spell your name for the record for me? Uh, Gavin Alton, G-A-V-I-N, L-L-W-T-A-N. All right, thank you. State, you may proceed. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And what is it that you do for a living? Uh, I work for the Orange County Sheriff's Office as a uh, deputy sheriff. And to what area of the sheriff's office are you assigned? Uh, court security. And how long have you uh, worked that assignment? Uh, four or five years now. And tell us, what are some of your duties within that assignment? I supervise the, uh, the deputies in two felony courtrooms and one civil courtroom. And are you familiar with the defendant in this particular case? Uh, just through research that I've done on her, I don't have any personal knowledge. And what, in, in regards to that uh, research into the defendant, uh, what is your position uh, as the head of security regarding her uh, request to be free from shackles? I do not believe she should be free of shackles. And why is it that you have come to that conclusion? Um, based on her current charge of uh, second, uh, second degree murder. Uh, she also has a previous uh, domestic arrest for battery by strangulation. She has recently- Battery by strangulation? There's a new one. 
I didn't know she had battery by strangulation, so she was choking Jorge at one point. This, listen, she's a small lady, and personally, I wouldn't give a fuck if she was shackled or not. But if, if old boy doesn't even want to have to deal with her, possibly acting out, that's enough for them to keep the shackles on. But the fact that she got shock shackles is wild to me. I didn't even know you could even do shit like that. They didn't even do it to Daryl Brooks. If you come to think about it, they never did that to Daryl Brooks, which they probably should have. But damn, they're treating her like big time. Not going to lie. For instance, at the jail for non-compliance, where she was told to attend her court hearings or scheduled court hearings, and she refused to do so. And then even when the corrections officers told her she could be charged with contempt of court, she still refused to attend those hearings. Um, those kind of, uh, when, you, when you combine all that, to me it shows a propensity for violence and not wanting to follow uh, lawful commands and orders of law enforcement personnel. Um, what, um, what accommodations uh, can be made in order to um, keep concealed uh, the fact that she is uh, shackled or restrained during trial. So when the defendant is here, she would just be in leg restraints. She wouldn't have the belly chains. She wouldn't have handcuffs on. We've, mod we've modified the leg restraints by wrapping. You see it, Annie B, freshly twisted in this house. Stop. Come on now. Come on now. Stop playing with me. <laughs> I appreciate y'all around chains so even if she's to make motion or movement it wouldn't make noise to alert the jury as to that she's got restraints on um she would be brought in and sat at the uh, defense table prior to the jury coming in and being seated so they wouldn't see her walk in with restraints on and there's a panel in front of the uh, defense table that prevents the jury from seeing that she's got uh, leg restraints on <coughs> Your Honor, I don't believe I have any uh, further questions at this time. Thank you. Ma'am, do you have any questions for Officer Loden? I do. Go ahead. First off, um, in your, in quotes, research that you've done on me, the um, domestic violence case that I was charged with, the felony with strangulation, was dropped. I don't know if you were aware of that in your so research. Was. Yes, so I was never charged with that. Um, also, what three hearings is it that I supposedly missed on what dates? I'll have to I have those here. I've never missed a court date. In the almost five years that I've been here, I've never. I've never argued. I've never hesitated. Can I object to the form of the question, Your Honor? I'm going to sustain the objection. Ma'am, you have to ask one fact per question. Okay. I am prepared to uh, give her the date. Okay. She's about to go nuts on the officer. This is, yo, but we're watching. This is her mock-up trial, folks. We're getting to see her do her little arguments in court. So I'm actually excited as shit for this one because now, now she's questioning. So this is, guys, this is a sneak preview to how she's going to function in court right here, right now. Just, just clip this and call the court sequence because... Yeah, let's see what I think she's going to I think she's going to ask her questions nicely. You know? I don't know. You guys are saying she's about to lose her shit. I don't know, but everybody shit. Cashman has the popcorn ready. Man, if anybody knows Cashman personally, tell her to come check out the channel. We're going to live stream it. You <laughs> and we'll interview you. <laughs> Please. On September 15, 2023, uh, that was one of the times you refused to attend. October 16, 2023, and January 28, 2021. And do you know what those were specifically for? Uh, for court attendance, wherever you were scheduled for that day. For a hearing or pretrial or withdrawal? I don't know. It was just this is just information from the jail where the corrections officer said you refused to attend your hearings. So is that on record that I have supposedly refused these three dates to appear in court? Yes, yeah, you yes. just fucking read it. 
Who is your contact, please? I've never missed a date. This is a database that I got. This no, you know what? She probably resisted the date. She probably showed up after the whole kicking and screaming ordeal. But she, you know what I'm saying? She's probably telling us half truths. She probably did go, you know, but after they fought and pulled and yanked and, and then she went. They, they're not going to write. So they're, they're not going to say failure to appear. If she appeared, it's just like she refused to go, so we forced her. That's what I think it's saying. Do you know when it was last updated? It's five and on. Okay, so do you know how I have never missed a court date? Oh, she didn't attend and, and accused everyone of excluding her? <laughs> okay. How long to do my hair? About four hours to the present date. I don't know specifically what these three dates are for um, in order for me to have supposedly uh, denied going. Do you know the name of the officers for each one? You do? Yes. Please. For the September 15, 2023, it is uh, Corrections Officer Portia Hines. Could you spell her last name, please? H-I-N-E-S. And you said the date was 9-15-23? Correct. Okay. And if you would like, I can read her comments in her report. Sure. At approximately midnight, I informed inmate Boone, Sarah, that she was scheduled to appear in court today. Inmate Boone uh, stated she did not want to attend court. I advised her that her absence could result in being held in contempt of court. Inmate Boone stated she understood and continued in her decision to refuse. Oh. Corporal Hal Cameron was notified. This report is being generated for informational purposes. But it doesn't say what it was that I supposedly refused. To attend court. It doesn't say specifically what your hearing is for. Okay. Second one, uh, it'll be Officer Christy Green. And what is this date for? I'm sorry, what's that? Which date is it that you're referencing? That's going to be October 16, 2023. So basically all the time she said, fuck you, I'm not going. They just put it as her resisting or something. I mean, is that a reason to shackle her? I mean, we're really picking at straws right now. I wouldn't shackle her just to see what happens. <laughs> but I guess the court system isn't trying to run an experiment with Sarah Boone. But what's she going to do? Charge at the judge or something? Charge at a witness? She's like 110 pounds. Mr. G.I. Joe over here can just pick her up and body slam her. Like, you know what I mean? It's not going to be the hardest thing in the world. So, you know, I guess for unnecessary violence, we handcuff her. But I don't think it's necessary. Honestly, what is she going to do? All she could do is be passive aggressive and say it's against her rights. Like she's been saying this entire time. Okay, I'm sorry, the name? Green, G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. And what was the first initial, please? K. G-R-E-E-N-E. -E. Yes. 10-16-23. Yes. Okay. And the third one is January 28, 2021. And the officer is Jasmine Scribner. S-C-R-I-B-N-E-R. What are the comments, please, for uh, Green? At approximately 0300 hours, I advised inmate Boone, Sarah, that she was on the schedule to attend downtown court. Inmate Boone stated she did not want to attend court. I informed inmate Boone that if she fails to attend, she could be held in contempt of court. Inmate Boone acknowledged she understood and continued with the decision to refuse to attend court. A verbal ward at the Booking and Release Center uh, transport officer was notified. All proper not notations were made in the IMS. Okay. And January 28th? Approximately 0334 hours, inmate Boone Sarah was advised she has downtown court and to start getting ready. Inmate Boone stated she did not want to attend court. I informed inmate Boone that she could be charged with contempt of court. Inmate Boone still refused to attend court. Corporal Hall and the Booking and Release Center transportation officer were notified of this incident. This report is being generated for informational purposes only. And all of those comments were made on the day of that I supposedly refused? 
I don't know when they entered that. It doesn't state in their IMS? Yeah, she's just passive aggressive, but that that's um it's not gonna do anything. There's nothing wrong with being passive aggressive. They have passive aggressive lawyers. Her problem is she doesn't really understand what she's doing. Like, for example, she's getting the names and dates for each person. I guess she could research the people and try to come with a motion later on. But do you think she's really going to be able to follow up with these names and these people? Officer Green on this and this and time. What are you going to do? Question each one? Clearly, they're copying and pasting the same exactly the same exact explanation. You refuse to go to court. And when it comes time to you have to go to court, I think this is the problem. When it comes time to, okay, now this is for real, you have to go to court, then they don't want to have any issues. Is she shackled right now? Yeah, she has her little handcuffs on. I don't think she has the um, the shocks on her right now, but she's definitely handcuffed. I just feel like that's kind of crazy that you can actually just shock somebody if they're acting crazy. I guess what's the difference between tasing somebody, right? In their program? It probably it might, but I didn't take that information out. Okay. So I'm trying to figure out how it I know all three corporals and the the sergeant, so I've never refused court. I don't there's no reason for me to want to refuse court. I'm gonna object this to ask the answer. I'm going to sustain the objection. So the domestic violence, the original, was dropped. I was never charged with that. Object as to relevance, Your Honor. Overruled. You can answer the question, sir. Okay. Um, it was dropped. You were charged and arrested. I don't know why the state dropped it. It could be because of both parties, based on the report that I read did not want to cooperate, so they probably didn't have information to go for um, with the charges. That does not mean that you didn't commit the act, it just meant the state felt that they didn't have a case that they could win. What is your definition of probably did not cooperate? Was it a fact or you're just guessing? It said, you're all going to object. No, that's overruled. She, he could answer that. Back to the question. Objection sustained. Ask another question, Sarah. Those of the charges were dropped for Mr. Torres and for myself was because we did cooperate and there was not enough information. And we received documentation in the mail, both of us, for the reasons why it was dropped. Your Honor, I'm going to object this to the form of the question. It's not a question, it's a statement. Sustained. Forgive me, because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm trying to provide my information for what it is that I'm being accused of. I don't know if I'm doing it the wrong way, apparently, so I don't know how I'm, I don't know the protocol for this. I'm just trying to answer my accusations. I understand your position. I cannot tell you what to do. I cannot provide you any legal advice. Damn. Okay. Um, Yo, she's dead in the water, bro. This shit's about to be sad. You wanna see a depressing trial? Come watch the Sarah Boone trial because <laughs> I think she's going to start crying halfway through this shit. I would. I would start crying. Fuck it. Grown ass man balling because fuck. I wasted eight lawyers and a 10 year sentence that I could have been six years through right now. Do you, ain't that about a bitch? Man. I'm just stating to the court that I'm doing my best with no being uneducated in this situation um that is my do i for the non-compliance i need to speak to the corporals and the sergeant in order for that to be remedied and then what about do you need the documentation for the uh, domestic charge that i was not charged with and it was dropped cooperatively i do i do know that the charges were dropped i'm just saying that is in your history I understand, but I was never charged with it, correct? You were charged with it. It was dropped. The charges were dropped. But it is not on my record. The arrest is on your record. But the charge for the domestic violence is not on my record. No, you were never convicted. to ask and answer, Your Honor. It's overruled. You were never convicted of the domestic battery charge, but you were charged with it. And, this, and the case was dropped? Yes. 
for the uh, three um, supposed noncompliance that I have, I know that two of the officers are no longer with the Department of Corrections, uh, Orange County Corrections Department. So I will need to speak to their um, supervisors in order for me to have, um, I guess, this remedy. Is it a- Your Honor, I'm gonna to object to the form of the question. This is a, a statement, not a question. Objection is sustained. I guess I will provide information to you for uh, the non-compliance occurrences that I'm being charged with. Your Honor, again, I'm I think most people are saying she deserves 10 years or 15 or something like that. It's because both of them were beating each other. It's not like he was. Be it's like it's not like she was just beating him and he was like this little scared guy in the corner. It was it was a boxing match. Everybody said it. They they were going in there like WWE, slam dunking each other into chairs and tables and shit. So you got two people having mutual combat in their fucking house, you know, you and someone dies, it's kind of like, well, I guess she was the stronger one. You know, it's like it's not like, oh, that poor person. So when they I kind of understand the 10 to 15 because, I mean, you know, her deal was pretty low, in my opinion. But um, to give somebody life when they were just beating each other, I'm always like, I always feel like if they're beating on each other, I mean, you know, it's equal fights. And somebody dies, it's like, well, shit, neither one of you wanted to leave. And both of you guys wanted to beat each other. So I can't feel bad for either one of y'all. Like, for example, what if Sarah died, you know? Then everybody would be calling Jorge a monster. Oh, I hope Jorge goes to jail forever. Oh, I hope Jorge just, just rots in jail for a lifetime. That's what everybody would be saying. But my opinion is just like, well, Jorge's a piece of shit. Sarah's a piece of shit. Rest in peace to Jorge. Everybody can change. Everybody, everybody can change themselves. But right now, it's kind of just like she survived <laughs> the fight. So, you know. I don't think it's the same type of sentence compared to someone who just attacks somebody, you know, just you see a lady on the side of the street and you attack her. That's the type of shit that, you, that I think you should get life for. Not when you know someone for 10 years and you guys are just beating the shit out of each other. You guys are both just stupid for that. That's not a question. It's a statement. But that's not what happened. I mean, everybody knows what the fuck happened. <laughs> you know, I don't have to repeat. She locked him in a fucking suitcase. But I'm saying their history. This is what matters. This is what you take into consideration. It was a good day. <laughs> yeah, they were playing games. They were playing hide and seek. Fucking psychopath. Anyways. And she has a history of... um. Putting people in suitcases, actually, I should pull up that suitcase picture. Let me, I'm going to play the video, then I'm going to pull up the suitcase pic. Hold on. The objection is sustained. I know this is a lame question, but what does sustained mean? That means the state's legal basis for you asking that question is correct, and the court will not permit you to ask that question. Thank you. In the way that it may be asked. What do I need to provide to you in order to have that remedied in order for me to be unhandcuffed? Uh, Your Honor, again, I'm going to object as to the, the form of the question. The rule. Whatever documentation, but I believe that the decision as to whether or not you'll be in restraints will be made today. I understand, but it can be made. What's that? Um, the decision in order to be um, unhandcuffed. Correct. I, I, I see this right here. That shit right there. Look at that. This is what she was doing with her kid, apparently. <laughs> Somebody had posted this years ago. She likes doing suitcase things. So when you tell me that they're beating, well, you know, when you know the history that they're beating on each other, she has a thing for suitcases. It just all makes sense. It all just, it just all comes full circle. It all comes full circle. I suppose if you have documentation to say that this was all fabricated, then I wouldn't be able to use this. Correct. As you 
telling me about the uh, domestic violence. That cannot be used against me either. It is still part of your... Yeah, she has a suitcase history, allegedly. Um, I didn't watch the full video, but another channel had posted about it. And that picture was circulating online about how she would put her kid in the suitcase and it was a joke and it was games. So honestly, listen, when she says they were playing, I think that they were playing and she likes suitcases and she, and you know, when you're a kid, you like going into boxes, maybe a little suitcase. I'm sure one of you, I'm sure one of you guys as a kid got up into a suitcase, right? Oh my God, it's so fun. Cool. It's a little box. It's a suitcase. It's a, she's into that shit. So when she said they were playing and she put them in the suitcase, hey, anything, she probably got them to get in the suitcase and then shit changed. You know, when you drink, emotions are like a motherfucking tidal wave up and down, left and right. So she was like, you know what? Remember that one time you beat me and you slapped me across the face, Jorge? I'm just going to leave you in there. It, bro, I'm telling you, it happened just like that. She was like, you know what? Now that you're in the suitcase, I remember all the bad shit you did to me. I'm going to let you sit in there for hours. I'm going to let you suffer, Jorge. How about that? <laughs> and she still thinks she's playing. She's being cruel, but she's playing. And then he fucking dies. So, you know, she could have hit him with a baseball bat. She could have pushed him down the stairs. We don't know about all those things. Those are variables that we'll find out. But big picture, that I think that's what happened. She likes suitcases. I can bring it up. Right. But just to clarify and conclude, I was not ever charged with that. Again, I'm going to object as to ask me as a sustained. I was into cardboard boxes as a kid. Yeah, there you go. My cousin used to zip herself into a suitcase for fun. See, Carol, boom. Sarah's stuck in this. When she drinks, she turns into a kid again. She wants to go play hide and seek. She wants to zip people in suitcases. And then she took it too far. She called him stupid for getting in the suitcase for getting in the video. I don't know about that. I've seen a lot of angles of the video. She just says, fuck you for all the times you choke me, this, that, and the other. That's my name. Don't wear it out. I didn't see her say you're stupid for giving in. But hey, I wouldn't put it past her. I wouldn't put it past her. Sarah, Sarah says not intentionally. Randy, that's her favorite word. Okay. Um, I will. Do I provide this information to you? You can provide it to the state. Don't provide to me, give it to the state. Oh, and nothing to do with you. Um, am I, in your opinion, um, a flight risk or um, detrimental to the courtroom and am a uh, threat of any type of harm? Based yes. on what I've researched, I don't know you personally, but based on my research, I don't think it would be appropriate for you not to be in restraint. And then what was the year, please, for the um, charge that was dropped with the domestic violence? It was 2018. 2018? Correct. And it is now 2024. Okay. And you're going solely off of, uh, what, the arrest affidavit? What is it that you're using to conclude due to this occurrence that was dropped that I would not be able to be uh, unrestrained. Correct. Your, your arrest history, the information I read, um, all the research that I've done, that's where I'm basing my conclusion on. But what specifically from that 2018 charge? The fact that you were charged with battery bias regulation, which is a violent act is one of the reasons why I've said that I do not believe it's appropriate for you not to be in restraints. But it was never proven, correct, because it was dropped? It was dropped. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. Okay. I'll be working on the others with the corporals and the sergeant for the supposed non-compliance. Thank you for the dates and the information. You're welcome. But see, that's the uh, I'll be working with the sergeants for the supposed non-compliance. Like, bitch, you're not going to be able to work with nobody. Like, it gets past. It's past. We're, again, I'm not a lawyer. 
but maybe she can make another motion i'm assuming maybe but i feel like once it's passed it's passed right what you you're gonna work with them how what is that gonna do unless an officer comes and says no i did not say that that statement is false then she has a case but you know that's not gonna happen she didn't go to court that day hey you know it's been five years maybe she forgot any other questions do i need to supply anything for the 2018 domestic violence oh shit that you are dog referencing and applying oh Liam, it's already been dropped i'm just telling you what the history is so. and you you're and you can still apply it even though it's not been correct it's in your history okay thank you for the information any follow-up state no you're on it's fine thank you sir okay. anything else state Okay. Um, I see Deputy Barnett here. Could you come up, sir? here at the Orange County Courthouse? I'm the Deputy Sheriff at the Orange County Courthouse. I work in courtrooms, I supervise squads, and I'm also in charge of uh, training inside the courthouse. Okay. Is there any training that's addressed with regard to other security measures other than shackles that may be provided for defendants? Yes, we have an item called the stun cuff that is also used in the courtroom. Okay, okay here we go. The stun cuffs, here we go. Only in Florida, bro. Where, where was Daryl Brooks? He was in Wisconsin, Waukesha, Wisconsin. Wisconsin's the state, right? Yeah. Um, I guess Wisconsin's some soft boys over there. Florida said, hey, look, we, we give people death penalties and we shock people. We don't give a fuck. <laughs> we don't give a fuck. <laughs> Florida don't care. They're like, yeah, we got shock cuffs. We don't play. We don't do that shit. <laughs> What's up, Mo? How you doing? Okay, could you step us through what a stun cuff is? A stun cuff is a electronic device that's wireless. It's uh, wireless. Ooh. It's box secured to the leg. Uh -huh. It has uh, fifty thousand volts. Okay. It's able to be remotely. Yo, fifty thousand volts seems like a. Sh that seems like a lot. Sparked from a distance. How is it fixed or placed on a person? It's dual strapped along the cap of. Uh, Either way, it can be hidden in the pants and gives the ability to people to walk around. And who is in charge of operating um, that device? It'll be an assigned officer that's been trained in the device. And step us through the operation of how that device is utilized or operated by that officer. The officer will uh, show the device to the subject or the inmate or the defendant. It will be secured with two straps on the leg. Uh, there is a waiver to be set, signed prior to being used, explaining when it would be used, if if it was needed to be used during court, violence, attempt to escape, uh, any actions that lead to that level of uh, to use the device. Um, it's a two-step process, so there is no way for it to accidentally be set off. It has to be hit two separate buttons, so there's no accidents. If it had to be used, it would cause a shock to the location on the calf, causing a great amount of pain, causing the defendant most likely to fall to the ground, and we could secure and take care of the situation. Are there any other protocols or standard operating procedures regarding the use of the stun belt, other than what you've already identified? Just to follow up with uh, use, uh, response, to response to resistance policy. Yeah. Okay, and can you explain the response, response to resistance policy? We have a level of response to resistance depending on what an individual does to what we would do. So if she was attempt to escape or fight, we would use it to match that level of resistance. She would probably shit herself if that many volts hit her. I'm not going to lie. 
what is the level of resistance whereby which the um, stun belt would be deployed or utilized? At this moment, it's at a level three. And what is a level three? Level three would be failing to follow the directions and stuff like that. If we have to get on the move or not, or follow the lawful order, we could use it. Um, most likely in the courtroom, we would use it probably at a level four level. That's oh, what's up, Hello Baby? Shout out Hello Baby. She's the one who sent me the pictures of Sarah Boone as well. She's been sending me shit. I appreciate you. If I don't respond, that doesn't mean I don't see it. I'm just, I have a lot of emails sometimes. I appreciate those pictures. Pretty much fighting, escaping, attacking another person. Okay, all right. State, do you have any questions to uh, Deputy Barnett? No, no. Right. Ma'am, do you have any questions for Deputy Barnett? I do, please. Go ahead. Um, tell me, what is the title of this? Stunt cuff. 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 And you said this was applied on the calf or the ankle? Yeah, the Achilles tendon area of the other leg. And is this something that it does it need uh, extensive preparation or is it something that can just be put on coming and going from the courtroom? We would place it on you before the court starts. You have to take it off as court every time we exit the courtroom. It takes a few moments besides signing the waiver and securing it to the leg. And it's a one-time waiver? Uh, Each day you will have to recite the waiver. Okay. And okay, so there's no limit to how many times it can be put on and taken off, put on, taken and off. No. And it's a very simple, very uh, simple uh, process to apply. Yes. And remove. Yes. Thank you. Any follow-up? Nothing to say. All right. Sorry. Sorry. Um, would I have my hands free? Correct. Yes, you would have your hands free either way. If you were in a leg iron, your hands would be completely free. The stun cuff, same thing. And then my hand, and I would be able to walk. You would be able to walk with the stun cuff freely. Yes. So hands free and able to walk. Yes. Thank you. Any other follow up, State? No, you're on fire. Uh -huh. They literally have her on the leash like she, like she's a dog. You know when the dogs bark too much, they do all that shit and they get shocked their asses off. Man, you wouldn't have had no stun cuffs if, if you had a lawyer, Sarah. But I guess because she has to walk around, it makes sense because she could get close to the jury. She could get close to the judge. She could walk around. She could get close to witnesses. For example, she's given her, her statements, right? I'm assuming she'll be able to walk around and kind of be like, so, so jury, this is why this is bullshit. You know, she can walk around and shit like that. So if she tries to take off on somebody, 50,000 volts, ning, shit in herself. I'm promising you she's letting some loose if she gets if she gets shocked with that much electricity. She's either peeing or or pooping because that shit, that's a lot. I don't even see how that's fair. 50,000 volts around the ankles. Damn. <laughs> I wonder if she's going to call their bluff one of these days. And she's like, "They're not, you know what? I'm just going to wild out." I wonder if she decides to just take off on somebody one of these days. It would be a sight to see. The headlines would be crazy. Can Mr. Barnett or Sergeant Barnett be re released? Yes. Ma'am, can he be released? Yes, thank you. Right. Thank you, sir. State any argument, any further witnesses, evidence, or testimony with regard to the defendant's shackle motion? Uh, no, Your Honor. Ma'am, do you have any other things that you would like to tell the court with regard to your motion? I don't understand what um, Sergeant Burnett was. Was that you all providing me an option? There is Florida Supreme Court case law addressing reasonable measures for movement by a defendant in the courtroom. So that is an option? Yes. Okay. Do I need to supply the information in regards to the, the supposed three non-compliance before that can actually be uh, made an actual option? I cannot answer that question because that would be me providing you legal advice as to what you could, can, or should do, and I cannot do that. Would I be able to be unrestrained with that information? I think that would come down to the argument of yourself and from the state as to what the local court has to consider with regard to your requests and your motion and what the law is in the state of Florida. If I may make it clear also, 
I'm simply just asking to be unhandcuffed so I can write and move properly. I'm not trying to move the maneuver of the courtroom and so on and so forth. I simply just am asking to sit here being unhandcuffed so I can write without taking skin off of my wrist and being extremely uncomfortable. Okay. Ma'am, thank you for that clarification. Because when I read your motion, you asked to be unshackled, to have freedom of movement. And I interpreted that as you wanted to move, as everybody else may be able to move in this courtroom, as Mr. Cacciatore has moved around, how other persons have moved around. And it wasn't only limited to your hands. I thought it meant to your entire person based on what it is that you were seeking in your motion. So just for the purposes of my own clarification, is your motion only seeking to have your hands not bound so that you could move your hands, but otherwise shackles that may be on your legs would continue to stay there? Right. I don't currently have shackles, but I don't know what is in regards to trial procedure. And in regards for you not having the clarification of me just wanting to be unhandcuffed, is it my responsibility, or I don't know if you can answer this, but... You don't ask questions, which is what got me in this predicament from the get-go of having no counsel because no questions were ever asked to me. Just for the majority of my motions and letters and so on that I have um, supplied the court for more information to try to intervene and help, it's just gotten me into hotter water and no counsel and still restrained. So is it something that I need to specifically clarify going forward, or is it something that you're, you have the ability know. to ask me questions? So I don't even know what the fuck she's asking at this point, bro. What the fuck are you asking? If you want your hands free, you clearly heard, like, she's just being difficult. She clearly heard that her hands and feet will be free. She just can't walk around the courtroom. In the fucking story, like, what, what is she asking?